previously on the MJ and Adam show. MJ went to Shibuya to meet up with a friend BJ Fox. He learned all the great points of a comedy bar in Tokyo that can provide everyone with a great English atmosphere to improve many aspects of their English. Little did he know, he found himself in a deal where he was to perform stand up comedy for the first time. All right, well, this is it. Night has fallen, and it is my turn to go in and join the comedy club and try my best at delivering some comedy. Oh my gosh, everyone. So nervous? Okay, before we jump into my debut into the stand up comedy world, there was a lot of things that happened before the show started, and I want to share that with you guys right now. After I talked with BJ, he gave me some tips on stand up. Start strong with the joke, use the rule of three, and end with the joke. This helped me tremendously because we're all familiar with listening to jokes, but to create one and to tell them in a funny story in a funny way is a lot easier said than done. Another thing he told me was to write it all down. During the open mic, everyone gets four minutes of stage time. Writing all down helps control where the punchlines are, and it gives you the chance to practice and time yourself to see how long it is later. I just went off to a nearby cafe and sat down for like two hours, guys. Two hours! And just over in my head, over and over and over, thinking about what story I should talk about and how to tell it so it could be funny. That's when I realized how hard comedy is. I would write a few lines and then stop myself and think, when and how should the punchline come in? Is this a good place to say it? How should I structure this story? I wrote my bit about like five times. And even at the end, I still wasn't sure about if it was good or not, but my time was up. I had to get back to the comedy bar and go over my bit with BJ and then check out the other comedians. At that night, there were two open mics happening. The first was a 7 p.m. open mic all in Japanese. I decided not to try that one since it was my first time trying stand up and I wanted to stay in my comfort zone of my native language, English. But I did watch the Japanese open mic. The MC of the night went up and welcomed everyone, and told a few jokes to warm up the audience, and then people came up one by one to start telling jokes. チャリですね、ちょっと病気が出てきました。なんか下ネタ言わなきゃいけないかなって。美術館のこれそういうレッサーさんちょっとこうやつあるじゃん。ここでやるチャレンジ。ワニプロレスラーになりました。でも海外で
go, Jory, put your hands together and make some noise all the way to the United States of America. MJ! <laughs> MJ, not Michael Jackson, the pedophile, but I do have a pedo stash. You know, so that's, uh, that's a, I've been living in Japan for about 14 years now. Holy shit, 14 years. And I love so many things about Japan. Delicious, healthy food, rich culture with all the shrines and everything. So planned. But there are a few things that really stand out that the whole world knows about. The technology, everybody knows about the technology. And one of the things that people even talk about, people are like, you see the toilets? Holy sh like my sh is impressed. The toilets. You got buttons for like, spray your ass or other parts. And then, and then you have like a, 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 something that helps the smell so it doesn't stink so much. Hell, there's even a button in the women's bathroom that is a flush sound. So the girls don't have to hear each other fart. Don't ask how I know that. <laughs> um, as you know, there's, there's so many high things within the technology, so many great things. There's also the exact opposite. Sometimes you're walking around, uh, maybe some public area, public park possibly. You gotta go. Sometimes you open up that, that bathroom door, see the dreaded washiki, the squatting toilet. I don't understand how such high technology can be present in a place where you still have a hole in the f***ing ground. I don't even, okay, okay, so I was in an event, had lunch, it was good, but was not good is my choice of lunch. I had curry, Indian curry, oh god. Um, I didn't really think too far ahead, but I did know that the washiki was there, and I dreaded it the whole time. I'm like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I don't want to. And then I couldn't take it. Sweating profusely. Like I just took a shower. Mid-Japan, at that time, seven years. And I made a pledge to myself. I'm never going to use that I don't even know how to. But this is the day. Here it is. I got to do it right now. I'm like, which way would you face when you're looking at the thing? I'm like, okay, well, I don't want to fall in. My hair's a problem. So if I'm going to be squatting down, I got to like throw it back all the time. I got my nice tight pants because I'm trying to look cool. That didn't help out. All right, so then I'm there doing some like majestic yoga poses, trying to figure out how to balance myself and take a shit. Sweating so much, I'm thinking like, oh my God, this is the day. Mom, are you watching? Maybe, you know, you shouldn't be watching. Here it is. And then you know those times when some people have like traumatic experiences and they say, your soul leaves your body for a second. And, like you're looking at yourself. <laughs> I didn't have that. The sh came back in. It didn't go out. It disappeared. And I was like, it's not the day. I can still continue going on being a washiki virgin. But today I'm happy that I'm not a stand up comedian virgin. Thank you all very much. Okay. And that was it. I walked up to so many people, give me a nice pat on the back, say, good job, MJ. I got a few laughs here and there. For me, that was a success. I told the story right, I kept track of where the jokes were, and I kept it all in time. After that, I was able to grab a beer, sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest of the night. And it was amazing to see how the bar was really a place for people who just loved comedy. I, definitely, there's a bunch of people who come here for learning English. So much improvement. It's, it's astonishing. But there's like a bartender who works here, and then he does stand-up comedy here. And now he speaks like it looks. I, I wouldn't. I could. I can't tell if he is from America or from Japan. <laughs> I do see a lot of performers that do that. That um, they want to not only practice listening to the, to others' English, but they want to you know practice speaking and of course making people laugh is a drug so you know even if you can get a little laugh out of people with you know even if it's not grammatically correct it's it's a very you know good feeling that comes back and it kind of reinforces language learning at the same time as strengthening human bonds so i think there is you know there's a the human aspect and then also the language aspect and they kind of come together very nicely uh this is one of the plays i actually practiced both polite and rude and honest and this sounds like every sort of communications or type of expressions that I've learned so far. So yeah, it's it is helping me a lot. やっぱりこの環境に入れる入れるだけで英語がどんどん入ってくるから来るたびにも強制的に海外の人と喋る状況になるからやっぱり日本人だけの空間にいるよりか英語を勉強するのはすごいいいんじゃないかな。甘えな
If you want to learn English, come to the Tokyo Comedy Bar. A really great thing about going out and experiencing different types of comedy is not only that you will be learning about the culture, but you can also make friends as well as one thing you, you have to always remember is you get that atmosphere. Creating the environment of English is one thing that is definitely going to help you in every way of, of improving, getting more confidence with your English. So definitely check out Tokyo Comedy Bar. I highly recommend it. <laughs> That's it for this one. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. Next step. Okay.